The Electoral Commission of Ghana is under fire for a few number of things that threaten its ability to deliver a credible general election. Its limited voter registration exercise has been plagued by delays and connectivity issues that forced the commission to go wholly offline in the first few days. Now, electoral officers have also been accused of misconduct in the registration process. Furthermore, the commissioners are accused of procurement breaches, corruption and pathological conduct. To top it all up, the ghost of the cardinal sin of Sal, as it is called, came haunting. The commission now finds itself defending the decisions that led to the disenfranchisement of the people of Sancho Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe and Lolobi. And merely denying their role has only further plunged their reputation in the eyes of the public. On Hot Issues today, we ask, can we trust the Electoral Commission of Ghana ahead of the 2024 general elections? That question has become more important on the back of a recent security breach at the Electoral Commission, especially as Ghana goes to the polls in only about seven months. I am Kemeni Amano, and in this edition, my guest is Director of Electoral Services at the EC, Dr. Suribu Kweku. Thanks for sitting with us here on Hot Issues. Thank you very much. Indeed. Some electoral watchers have argued that the Electoral Commission is setting the stage uh, for distrust and mistrust towards the 2024 elections. How do you react to that? Can, if you can give me the reasons, why are they saying so? Well, when we look at e events in the last few days, when the uh, voter registration exercise began, we know that you had to go offline. We've also had the banters between you and the opposition and also between you and the policy think tank, Imani Africa. It's given reason for some people to think that you're setting yourself up for mistrust and distress. I don't know, and I don't want to accept that conclusion. If you are talking of the challenges with respect to registration, it was not in that a particular political party. The difficulty of the internal connectivity has nothing to do with any political party. They were prevailing in all the uh, regions, so I, I, I don't I, I understand that, or I don't accept that. If you are talking of banter with the NDC, we, don't, we haven't had any banter. They requested for something, and we said for security reason, we cannot give it to them. So I don't think that is any form of a banter. Then if you talk of the Imani, they have talked about our process of procurement, our process of uh, disposal of the BVDs, and rest, and rest into the, the SAR. So in each, each case, we explained our position. And the commission thinks that it has not done anything wrong. So either they don't understand the process, uh, they just want to be mischievous. We, we, don't, we, we don't think that we have committed any crime. Does the commission worry that this could be the beginning of casting doubt on its ability to deliver a credible election? Anybody who has followed elections will appreciate that these are not... Even just in 2020, there were a lot of issues when we decided to go for a new um, uh, biometric voter registration activity. There were a lot of issues, but you and I who tell me, we agree that when we did it, it was a successful activity. That currently we have one of the best BVDs in the world in terms of the speed and accuracy in determining voters and the rest. So for us, posterity will judge us. On the back of that, what do you say to people who say, uh, even limited voter registration exercise, we are having problems and going offline? How much more when we are in the thick of things in December of 2024? You see, the first thing that I want to, I want people to know that offline is part of the recession process. So it's not something new. And if you talk of 2020, we did more offline than online. Because the more, the further you are from the digital office, the difficulty, the, the stronger will be the difficulty of getting connectivity. So in 2020, I would say it was about 90% offline, if not more than 90%. 2023, if we did it at the offices, we we'll see so we supported that with offline. So offline has always been part of our registration process. Mm. So I take it as uh, for all that has been happening, the um, 
commission is not worried about delivering uh, credible election at if, all. If you're focused and you know where you're heading to, you don't get it started. Because you know that at the end of the day, everybody will come on board and the truth will prevail. Okay, so, so, so let's tackle a few things. After the first two days of the uh, voter registration exercise, you went offline. Yes. You're back online now. A combination of two. A combination Where of there two. are difficulties with respect to connectivity, you, go, uh, you use offline. Mm. Where you have reliable connectivity, you go online. And at times you are yourself, you are phone. And even at your office, at times you find difficult making calls. Mm. So when the connect, internet is creating a problem for you, you go offline. So it is, as I said, it has, it has always been part of our registration process. Mm. So as, as you have explained to us before, once you are online, you are not able to sync your data. Yes. Right. No, once, you're offline. once you are offline, you are right. not able to sync your data. You're right. So anytime you come online, you sync your data and you are yes. able to determine where problems are. No. The online is live, real time. But when you do offline, you rather export the data to the data center. Right. And the, the data center will do the duplication. So you, the, it will be matching every individual data with the data that is already in the system. Which is where I want okay. us to go. Yes. Have you seen any um, irregularities uh, from your offline data collected uh, during the exercise yet? If I, don't under, I don't understand you are... And why let's talk, talk about the regret is different from maybe the way you want I to I guess so. Yes. So have you seen so, any... So we can say, have you seen any multiple registration? Multiple? Because, yes, because that's it, the dif difference, the major difference is that offline will allow multiple registration, online will not allow. Yeah, so what I'm asking is yes. have you seen any... Of the multiple registration? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. How many of them have you seen? I, can't, I don't have it offline, but we have had some of them. Okay. Anytime you go offline, you will get some. I see. I see. So, uh, you know, how ha have you dealt with that? Uh, no, so the, the, the process, let me take you through the process so that you appreciate it. When we finish with the registration, the system will do, do duplication. It will pick every voter's biometrics and match with the other biometrics. So now we have about 17.9. So if community, your, your data hits the, the process, it will match with the other. That's why when if you are doing online, the moment you put your hands on, your previous data will pop up because it, has, it much indicated that you are already there. Then it will pop up. So in the same vein, when you do offline, you export the data into the system. The system is there automatically will do the, the duplication. Then it will isolate or it will flag all the system voters that they think have done more than one. Right? Mm -hmm. So when it, do, it, it, it does the, the duplication, identify the, it flags the suspected multiple registration, we quarantine them, we print them, then we do what we call adjudication. The adjudication is that some of the reps of the political parties, but automatically MPP and this will be there. Mm -hmm. Then other parties will also bring about three people. Then the electoral commission will, will come with reps. Then the civil society, some of them will also come with reps. They will sit at the table like this, printed document about the uh, uh, multiple registration. So if Khmeini has registered more than five times, it will pull out your fingerprints, your data, the time, mm -hmm. the attire you wear, every head, the head, and all the five will come. Then the committee will sit, they will look at it, they will agree that this one is many. The system has flagged, but we also say that we agree that it is, it is, it is it's not an error. Then we also say that this one that is multiple. Then the system will put you, it will quarantine you. You are in the system, but okay. you are not active. Has that process begun? No, we have. We have it. It's after we are finished with the after registration. After you finish with the entire registration. registration. What it has started is the adjudication of the challenge system. Mm. Those who were challenging the cost of registering. That one, we have the district registration review committee. It is also made up of the district officer of the electoral commission as a secretary. This is this is police commander or his rep. This is data verification or his rep. The traditional the traditional head of the place or his rep and reps of the uh, other other political parties. Mm. So they will sit constitute a committee called District Registration Review Committee, DRRC. Then they will adjudicate and give judgment. Mm. The law is that if they give judgment, it's binding on the electoral commission. Unless the challenger or the challenge appear against the judgment at the high court. I see. The other issue that has, uh, you know, been a thorn in your flesh is the... Uh, yeah, missing nothing, nothing is a thorn in our flesh. Not, us, not even the, the missing component of your no, BV, BV, BV. We, have, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have handed over to professionals and they are handling that. So we are going ahead to do our Okay. Work. In terms of the investigations, 
What have you learned about how the devices were stolen? It is still at the court. So it is when the judgment is given that we know that this is what happened. Any other thing is allegations. Oh, how so? I mean, I, I, I expect or I imagine uh, that the Electoral Commission would have its own security review of how this happened because this was an in-house job. Every information that we have, we have given it to the security people. They are part of the investigation. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't want to sit here and judge anybody. What so happened? any other person is a suspect. When the court gives judgment, then that what we suspected is the reality. Then we can be speaking to it. What were the failures that led to that security breach? Uh, the, the, the results of the investigation and the court process will come out with it. I see. But for now, we realized that some of the kids, the laptops have been taken from the kids. But I will explain that we were keeping their machines at one place with a CCTV. We moved them to another place for servicing and the rest. In between the two, mm. there was a movement. People were involved. So they here, that's where we had our suspicion. Was this movement within the facility of the electoral commission? From one location to another location. Or by all, all they, within you. They are all electoral commission, but, but different buildings. All right, so help me understand. What's the protocol when you need to move much, you know, your um, logistics bet between one point to the other? We have our security people. We have uh, the state security people. They offload them. They move them from where they are stored to a center point within the same building. They are uploaded. They are loaded onto a a vehicle, the vehicle moves to where we are going to dispose of. When we, when we put them there, they are also offloaded to where we are going to service on. So it's a form of uh, movement. Mm. And that's where we suspect. Because like, when you've brought something to your yard, it is human, it, human beings that will carry them to this place. I see. Right? So we suspect that in the course of that, that's for somebody. Because the other one is just a uh, uh, bag. So you just open, you can pick. I and see. don't tell him that nobody has stolen from your office here before. It happens. So we, that is so we know the protocol. So we said no. For this, it no. is only you who can have access Doc, to it. Doc, I understand that. If somebody steals from TV3, we don't have the kind of security that you have. <laughs> right. So it which tells me that somebody dropped the ball within that process of checking uh, to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, this does not happen. So that means all the protocols are there. So, it, so if I, I'm not concluding. I know where, you're where concluding. The, where the, assuming that the one who is even the supervisor is the, it's an accomplice, what happens? So please, let's leave that to the court. Mm. Okay, but that's what I said. Immediately it happened, we knew the people to suspect. Right. So we gave them to the security. They have investigated in the issues before the court. Why did they have to take the minority for the people of Ghana to know? Why you didn't see, you tell us? Let me tell you, since, 20, since I joined the commission, uh -huh. Whenever there's a suspicion of theft, we report to the police. The police will investigate, will investigate it. Where they are convinced, they are taken to court, and some are, some are jailed. It has happened before. When I was in Central in the 2012, it happened, somebody was jailed, but we didn't report with any particular part. Once your item is stolen, uh -huh. the people to report to are the security. Right. So you report to the security. And they pursue it. We don't go and hold this card out with the podcast. I see, but there are more of administrative issues. I, I absolutely understand, but I'd imagine that since you instituted, instituted let them know your let them know campaign, you let the citizen know as part of accountability see, and you, also you, to you, create you, the awareness. You see, what you should understand is that everybody involved now is a suspect. So you, some attempts, the laptops have been stolen. Mm -hmm. We suspect A, B, C. We have handed them over there to the police, giving them the information that we have. They will investigate. In the course of investigation, there you are informing people, asking names. I don't think even if you were involved, you'd be happy. So in our case, professionally, we, so, we, we, we suspect you, we, we give it to the police. Mm -hmm. And we did that about seven or 12, 14 days before even NDC got, in, got, got wind of it. I see. So the skit is, and as I speak, I don't know if you have been following the story, some people are in the, uh, before Absolutely. court. Yes, so let's allow the court to continue the process. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the course of judgment, we get to know 
the true stories behind them. So in, in what ways have you had to review your security at the Electoral Commission since this happened? What protocols yeah. came so into place? Do you want me to discuss the security protocols in did the you, commission? I will not discuss Did that you one. review your security I protocols not, uh, as a result of that? Automatically, we are, if, you, if you have a lock, a lock that somebody can easily open, you will change the lock. So we, we are, but we will not discuss the security protocols here. Despite your saying that the devices that were stolen uh, have, have uh, no implication on your and, and entire BV, um, BVR, you know, your BVR or your management system. The registration process. Yes. There are those who have said that reverse engineering could be a problem. How is the Electoral Commission ensuring that even if this was reverse engineered, there won't be, you know, an impact uh, I, on the I, credibility of our electoral role. I, I, I don't understand the meaning of the reverse engineer. What are you saying that somebody can use it to retract information? What, what, Absolutely. No, you see, those equipment have no data at all. At all. At all. Because they are only related for, to registration, as we are doing now. When we finish with the registration, we have what we call end of life. As we do registration, we are exporting the data. That's every data we are churning out, we are saying, and they are provisional. But it is possible that some data may not be exported, they will still be on the system. Mm -hmm. So it's when you do the end of life that the system will tell you that the machine was used to register 100 people, and all the 100 people have been exported. Once you do that, the data the machine becomes. Blank. I understand. So when you said the, the, it has no data at all, I assume that these were new machines and have never been no, used. We, oh no, they were the machines we used in 2020. So, so the point of the reverse engineering is, despite you know, deleting the, uh, the data that had been on it already, there's a chance that you know, people could reverse engineer whatever. So the data will come back. The data could come but back. If, so if it comes back, because Sibogoku is there, it comes back as Sibogoku, you're going to change it. Which is why we are trying to understand what was captured on it. Has it got the ability to compromise the electoral role? Just I'm saying that, when you, like I was taking you through, we, you register them, like if it's online, as you register, they are exported, they are getting there. If it's offline, when you finish the registration, you export them. But still, when you finish, we'll do the, uh, the end of life to be sure that you, every data that is on it had been exported to the database. After that, the system is reversed to the first setting as it was manufactured. Nothing on it. Nothing on it. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, between you and Imani Ghana, uh, there have been two issues. Three. Three. Okay. Now, let's... Procurement, that is in there, they were saying that they were not obsolete. The disposal and SAR. Yes, I want us to look at the disposal first. On, on the issue of disposal, they have said you have disposed of more than uh, 10. No, we, all the equipment that were purchased in, for, in 2020, 2012 up to 2020, mm -hmm. all of them are, were declared obsolete because they were no use for 2020 and they were disposed of. I see. Now, their concern has been with the way and manner in which the disposal was done. What protocols did you follow to, do, to make the disposals? Administratively. The, the materials were in our stores. The act of administration were normally right, so it wrote to the commission that we have these materials in our stores, including old vehicles and other. There were about 22,000 equipment. So they are, we are no more using them. So why don't we dispose of them so they can have space for new materials and the rest? So we, uh, the commission hired a state valuer, SIC, v, 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 VC, or VI, to evaluate all of them. So the vehicles, the equipment, everything was were evaluated. The, rep, the report was, was delivered to them. Then they attached a letter to the Minister of Finance that these items have been declared obsolete. We want your permission to dispose of them. They also responded that, yes, you can go ahead, but take care that you, that you follow all the protocols. Then the commission selected, you know, we have database of all our, the people we deal with. Mm -hmm. So we, we selected six uh, oceaners. Then we interviewed them. They will pick one. Sanidani uh, Matt, 
So we picked him. He advertised in the paper, in the, in the graphic on the first, first of uh, uh, February. He advertised, then people came and they uh, tended for it. Then uh, a little cycle went at Oyarifa, mm -hmm. one those of the biometrics. And, then, and they have been accredited by EPA. So they, to, to one day one, we visited their site where Oxford, we are certified with the facility that they, they, they were there. And we, so once they, 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 they were disposed of, the, the, the auctioneers came and went and paid them the deposit into the consolidated fund. Our business is done. I see. The people so these are the protocols that we know we should follow, and we follow them. Okay. The question they also ask is, what is the track record of the company that ended up being, you know, disposing of the, the devices so in, in terms of, you know, dealing with sensitive data like uh, our, our electoral data? What is the track record of this company in, in disposing of sensitive data? We went through competitive tendering. They have been certified to recycle materials. They were selected. They were, they've done their job. So the records and the rest, I, I wouldn't know how to. There, there was no but consideration they, they, for whether or not. I, I was not. I wasn't the one who did the uh, the what do you call it? Auctioning, because if it's the pro, pro, professional valuer. So the professional auctioneer who did it. So once it is, it, it, once we have handed over to the auctioneer, it is their responsibility to do the rationale according to law. It's not like the to who determines who should win the tender. No, because I'm not talking about the tender. What I'm talking about is, sh don't you think there should have been considerations of whether or not um, this company that was going to dispose of our electoral you uh, data? We, you have given the business to somebody... Electric Commission does not auction materials. So we have identified a professional auctioneer recognized by the state. And they have done their professional work. When you do open tendering, you are not the one to determine that you came, you won, but we want to investigate you. You don't come into the auction at all. Do you have worry that whoever won that bid may not have had uh, a track rec record of disp disposing of sensitive data like our electoral data. That's right. We visited the place and they have been doing a lot of recycling. So, they, no, they do they do recycling of hard materials. But you know, the other bit of it is that this this also is our is sensitive data from 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 us. That's not the thing. So, then what is the sensitive data about it? If uh, my phone, I want to sell my phone, just a matter of taking everything in it. Once I remove it, it is an it is a new, more or less useless phone that goes. So every data that is on it has been deleted. So they, does, they don't contain it. Which is data. why I want Moreover, don't mm -hmm. forget mm -hmm. that we have acquired new beef, uh, uh, biometric equipment, which was used for 2020. So if, if, if there were to be data, it would be data which of no use because... It, we are now using data that is it, were is captured. It, is it really that it will be data of no use? There because, was no data. Because, because, because my, 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 my uh, electoral number hasn't changed. No, who told you? One, everything relating to registration before 2020 had been removed. So there are no more in our data. But we compared new voter activity in 2020. These kits were no use in 2020. So if you're saying data... Then, what data are we talking about? Because the current data started from uh, July 2020. These were materials wait, that were wait, used. Wait, Doc, help, help me understand. Are you saying that, you know, because new data was compiled in 2020, uh, there is no chance that, you know, for instance, if I, I was registered with that machine, there's no chance that my information could be there? No. What the fact means is that once you compile new, new data, we are no more using the equipment. Your data, if you go to commission that you want to know your records for 2019, mm -hmm. you will not have it. Because the moment you did, we will you, you will not have it. All right. But I'm, I, I guess, you know, in order to clarify the question, so my electoral number in 2020 is different from, the one, different from the one before. You, have the, you, you still have the two cards. Mm -hmm. Go and look at it. I you, see. Go, go and look at it. You have, you still, if, you, if you registered in 2020, 20, 1995, you were given a new card. 
new number. 2024, new number. 2012, new number. And 2020, new number. They are not related at all. They are not related at all. Moreover, I said that all this equipment, they have been taken through the end of life. So once you take to them to the end of life, they start afresh. That's why we are using... What, what, if what we use in 2013, mm -hmm. if you are using them in 2020, it will be end of life. Other than that, if it is there, it will tell you that you have done multiple registration. I see. Yes. So, 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 so once you, you flash it, everything is gone. So even if somebody was able to get data from there, apart from the electron number, what, the, what the, other data, information data from, where? from from you know the devices the, that the, were disposed, disposed of? of yes. You can't get because we said that they are blank, so you can't get any data. No, but I'm also saying that based on the argument, there is no possibility. So there is no possibility. Yes, I'm saying that once you do end of life, I will invite you when we do end of life to, on what we are doing the session, so you can and you appreciate it. Once you do end of life, it comes blank. It's like you have a phone. Once you flash the phone, of the, maybe there's a challenge and say that they will want to flash it, flash it. But or every data is gone. It, but even using the phone example, when you flash it, there, there are softwares that you are able to bring back whatever you have. No, you don't. You, not get, you not flash before you bring it up. So you do backup. No, no, no. I'm not talking flash. about about backing it up, especially with the iPhone. When you flash it, there's always a way that you there's a software you can use to bring back the information. Ah, that that, I don't know that, that one. You have flashed. But what I'm saying that but, these ones, they are the ones you will do end of life. They come to fetch setting, nothing on it. Well, Other than that, mm -hmm. what we have meant, because the system that once your records is on, there are records on it. If you add it to it, it will go there as multiple registration. It will quarantine your data. So if you don't do proper flashing, proper end of life, it will mean that the records will be there. And once the record is there, if you add, you are making the person multiple voter. Oh, but why would they make it multiple voter? Because when, the system will get to know you twice. But but the the electron number that identifies you won't be the same. So then there wouldn't be no. Once you are on it, it is the biometric. It, it goes with the biometric. Bi biometric. Yes. Yeah, so your biometric will be twice. It will identify as multiple voter. I see. When we come back, let's talk about the ongoing limited registration exercise. Then we'll look at a bit more of the controversial issues that have come up, uh, you know, in the last few days. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is Dr. Sribo Okweku, who is the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission of Ghana. Doc, thank you so much for your patience. On the subject of SAL, you have said that you didn't disenfranchise the people and you've yes. explained why. Yes. Um, Imani, on the other hand, thinks that this falls at your doorstep. Um, why do you think that it's not your fault when you are, you are mandated to have ensured that the people voted? Thank you very much. The Article 47 of the Constitution has mandated us to create constituencies. So apart from the Electoral Commission, nobody else can create constituencies. On the 9th of November 2020, Parliament passed an ally that established Guan district. The, the, the law also expects that for the membership of this assembly, there should be a district chief executive, there should be a member of parliament who will be an ex official member, there should be elected members to represent the electoral areas, there should be 30% government appointees. So every district assembly should have an assembly, a, a parliamentarian. Now, the LI established it. Commission was written to on the 10th of November. The commission started taking steps to have um, the CIA constituency to, to be put in place. We wrote, to, we drafted our uh, CI, sent it to Attorney General. That is a normal thing. Any CI that we, we pass, we draft it, give it to them for them to. Do, uh, professionally write it for us. When they finish, they will meet the subsidiary legislation committee to see the CIA that we have established, whether it's in line with their requirements. Then it will be laid before parliament for 21 sitting days, underline that, 21 sitting days. Mm -hmm. So when we wrote to the attorney general, they came to, uh, attention, that it came to our attention that parliament was on recess. They went, the very day they passed the law, went to recess, came after the election. 
So there was no way we could have even fulfilled the 21 sitting days for the CR to be passed. So it means that the next thing is have to go to the following year. Then our constitution also says that, Article, uh, Article 47, says that if you create a constituency, that constituency will have to come to effect after the resolution of the next parliament. Mm -hmm. So in 2020, they couldn't vote. The reason why they couldn't go vote was that a district had been created, they didn't have a constituency. If you wanted them to vote, then they would have voted for their mother constituency, which was... Uh, why didn't Boone. they? Why no. didn't they vote in Buem? An MP cannot represent two districts. So Buem has Jassica as districts. So the Buem MP is a member of the Jassica district. So the same Buem MP cannot be a member of... Um, Guan district because they are two separate districts. Well, but, so, at, but at the point, the Guan district was it operational? Once it has been created, it, it, it comes to effect. Once it is created, it, it comes to effect. Right. So I'm, I'm I'm a bit confused here. If the people at that time then, because of certain constraints with the CI, couldn't CI had not been passed, so there was no CI. Right. But the LI has established the district. So and you the, needed a CI. Now, for the constituency, there's a difference between a district which is established by an ally. Mm -hmm. A constituency is established by a CI. So the ally has been established. So, this has so, so, so what I'm asking is, you needed the CI to be able to let them vote for an MP. For, for you to create a constituency. So that they can vote for an yes, MP. Exactly. Right. So if the CI had not been established, been established yet... Uh, then they didn't have a constituency. Yes, they didn't. They didn't have a constituency, but they had originally belonged to... Yes, that's what I'm saying. So if you vote there, it means that that MP is representing two districts, because now we have but one But is, is there a law against that? Two districts cannot exist in one constituency? No, yes. Two, two, two districts cannot have one constituency. Okay. Because in other words, an assemblyman cannot belong to... two. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, a member of assembly cannot belong to two, uh, okay. two different districts. Local Government Act 1993 mm -hmm. at 462, session, session 6, subsection 6. Okay. 6. No person shall at any one time be a member of more than one district assembly. Right. Uh, right. So, so this, th this is saying that you and I, and anybody watching cannot belong to more than one district assembly. So now you have one district. No, hang on. In this case, in this case, if the people of Guan who didn't have a CI so that they could establish a constituency for them and have them vote uh, but, but for, for an the, MP, yeah, were, were allowed to go to their mother constituency to vote, it didn't make them a member. Not Nemo. If the MP that we are referring to, not the, the, the people. Once you elect. An MP, MP belong to the assembly. Imani has come to the conclusion that uh, this whole creation of that uh, district and the constituency thereafter was a grand plan to by ensure who? that by, by the EC and uh, everyone else <laughs> in, in the chain of, of events uh, to ensure no, so that please, let's Amewu got home. Let's focus. No, Amewu one doesn't come in. Amewu one, the T region was created. Guan is part of OT region. Mm -hmm. So Guan is no more part of voter region. So unless you are saying that they should leave OT region and go and vote for in the voter region, which is also against the law. Oh, oh. So once the you cannot a constituency cannot cross borders. A constituency cannot belong to two different So regions. there is no collusion. At all. Because the fact remains that one, unless we are saying that we don't recognize the creation of OT region. If you accept the creation of OT region, OT region is a different region, independent region from the voter region. That's, that's the first thing that you said. So if, and Guan belongs to OT region, not the voter region or the uh, constituency. No, but, but part of it, you know, had crossed boundaries. Uh, it, For now, right. we are talking of Guan district. Guan district is, in, as a whole, belongs to OT region. I don't think there's contention with that. Good. What I'm saying is that, and I want to hear your reaction to it, that this whole thing must, they think, or he thinks, was engineered to ensure that, uh, you know, some, 
the, the party of the day or the government of the day won in in particularly the part of Hohoi that stayed in, no, in, in the Volta region? I, I don't know. Uh, are you aware that a referendum was conducted and OT was carved out of Volta region? I, I, I am very aware so now of you are that. So well, we are talking of individual separate regions. Are you, are you agree to that? Was there collusion? I'm asking you, you have done as my question. Absolutely. I've, I've already said that there was no consent. So, you, no you, as far as if, you, that, if, you, that, if we have that, conspiracy theory, okay. it doesn't come to the electoral commission. Do you also the electoral commission was informed that a district has been created. We are aware that Guan belongs to OT region and they have been given a district. Our responsibility is to give them a constituency. Do, but we went by the law and we have created do, a constituency. Do, do, do you also admit that boundaries overlapped? Uh, no, that when, boundaries don't when, overlap. When, no, I mean, when they were carved out... Uh, There's no overlap. As, we, as I speak to you, Ute, uh, Guan District is there as a district. As we are doing the registration, they are doing everything in Ute region. So there's no overlap. What did you, do you say to uh, Imani's action of going to Shraj to petition them to look into the Electoral Commission uh, over what they believe are uh, very uh, corrupt practices that have taken place? The, in democracy... The law should be respected. So instead of the banter, accusation, corruption, what have you, they don't think it, it, it lies in, on their, in their mouth to determine who is corrupt or who is not corrupt. Mm -hmm. So if they, they have gone to Shirai, it's well and good. Shirai will uh, invite us if they have actually, uh, uh, what do you call it, petition them. We will tell our story. They also tell us, say, Shirai will come out with the verdict and you'll be here, you know what Shirai will say. I see. And that is the... In any civil democracy, if you think something has gone wrong, you use the law. Okay. So um, let's talk about the registration process uh, ongoing. Uh, what would be your assessment of it so far? I would say that, apart from the initial glitches, it has been very smooth sailing. That as we speak, we have gone beyond the 50% of the projected 623,000 that we were thinking of. So we... we we are, we, are, we are on course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that whoever is qualified and wants to be registered will be registered by the time we finish on the 27th of May. This exercise, look at the numbers could have been done within one week. Mm -hmm. But because we wanted to have a relaxed atmosphere for everybody to have his or her name on the register, that's why we gave the next 21 days. Mm -hmm. Now, if you visit, if you are um, monitoring the the way people were complaining about machines, um, in connectivity and the rest, I don't think those things are coming up again. To everything has been stabilized. Not, not as strongly, but there are still some areas, oh, particularly the, in the north, where uh, you know they still complain of uh, network issues. No, but see, that's why I said that if network is giving you a problem, go, go offline. offline. So I don't think anybody should have any issues. Mm. To so for now, we are not receiving. But initially, some of the areas we heard that there were huge numbers. Mm -hmm. We increased the uh, my machines for them. Oh, like so which areas? Come. Oh, it, it happened in Kaswa. It happened in uh, uh, Winneba and other areas. I can even in Accra here to some of the places. Mm. Yes. I see. There have also been the issue of uh, you know people, particularly minors, being bused to certain centres uh, to register. How has that come to the EC, and what steps have you taken about that? But for the commission. When somebody comes there and you have an issue, the only thing you can do is to go to the legal means by challenging the person. So some people have been challenged, and uh, I believe either this week or next week, the education, the education team, which is the this education committee, will start setting and be agitating on that. But we have been in, advising those who have been bashing people mm. that be careful that if you are facilitating somebody's way of registering, if the person is found culpable of, of offence, you are also guilty because you facilitated it. So How many of such cases would you say you have seen so far in this exercise? The, the manners. The, you know, people re raising disputes about someone's oh, uh, so far we have So far we have almost 4,000 challenges. 4,000 across 4, the country? Yes, and um, it, the, the numbers will continue to increase. I see. But we are not... Judging, it is the committee that will give the judgment. That will look at those. Mm. So, which areas are you seeing most, you know, uh, coming up with? Uh, the, la the last time disputes. I said it was Greater Accra that had more challenges. How big is the problem in the Greater Accra region? 
So Greater Accra uh, has total of 524, two, two, which is 1.5% of the number they've registered. Okay. In northeast, they have, that is 9, 9, which is 0.13% of the number they have registered. Do I, or you, are, you have interest no. in specific numbers, so, or I should go to. So, northeast, there are nine disputes nine, to settle. Exactly. There. I see. And Greater Accra is 524. Upper East, 37. Northern Region, 130. Bono, 43. Bono is 126. Volta, 523. Upper West, 104. to so 106. Northern Region, 400. So Eastern Region, 400. Central, 274. Ahafo, 117. Ashanti, 341. Western North, 53. OT, 140. Savannah, 37. Western, 75. Total, 2,000. 935 as at the end of the sixth day. The sixth day. You're good. I see. Let's now look at the uh, issues with connectivity. Mm -hmm. Now, you're saying that the connectivity issue were mainly internet. It's not because the machines could not communicate. They, they, they got the, the connectivity and the, the system started working. Oh. So, at times you'll be working, there's, there is to drop again. Once it drops, you have to go offline. Other than that, you cannot use the online. All right. So, explain the difficulty with the code to us. The, it's like I've given you my phone. Then I tell I will tell you that I will send you the PIN number or the password so that you can use it to open the phone and use it. So and sending you, I'm not here with you. The, it is generated at the head office and it is sent to the various regions. So the only way you can send is through the internet. Mm -hmm. So we're having the challenges there. And that was what that one did not take much time. Then when they got it, once you access it. Because if the phone is off, you open the phone, the phone will come live before the network will show that. Mm. Now you can use it. Then get accessing the network to, some of them had challenges and others went through. But let's bear in mind that despite all these challenges, whereas in 2023, the first day we registered around 12,000, this year, the first day we registered around 17,000. Mm, I see. But why didn't the Electoral Commission find need to make arrangements for uh to 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 deal with the connectivity issue no can I do, can I, you, you may be making a call the airline can drop and you see the other point is that we are extra careful i was given an answer that mm -hmm. you build your own house because of robbers i'm robbers you put burglar proof and that burglar proof can at times entrap you that is exactly what happens we want to avoid the abuse of the system so that people you know we trust our people, we've uh, uh, trained them and but still you have, you may have, still have deviant. So do it such a way that people who want to be diabolica will not have the opportunity to do it. So we don't give them the uh, access code a day before. We don't do that. Okay. And it's only when you have the access code before you can link it. There have been allegations that some of your officers are also uh, engaged in or colluding with uh, uh, parties, particularly conspiracy theory. The, the These are all conspiracy you, theory. Are they? You no. Know, if what if the person has done it? Let us arrest the person. Mm. Then we will investigate and but a conspiracy theory is so, you yourself. So no arrest at all, as far as you are concerned. Our officers, no, none of our officers have been across the entire country. For, the, for as far as this is concerned, because I have not heard of any other. What I've heard is with some people who were. Facilitating it, not but our not an well, officer. I haven't heard it. I see. If you have heard anything, you can't tell me. The, the NDC is alleging uh, that Muhazu Al Hassan, who is an EC registration officer uh, in the Pusiga Registration Center, uh, was using a single Ghana card to register over 20 applicants. Sure, the, the, and yes, I, I, I don't have that information, but that's when I say that once you recruit people. Automatically, you may have deviance. So when it is true, they have to report the case to the police, and the, 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 the law will take up the issue. Okay. Because automatically, you will know, you, the commission cannot know any, everybody. Because sitting in a crime, the rest, we don't expect that we know everybody. So, and if somebody is doing something which is illegal, the commission will not shield the person. But th this will not be the first time that an electoral officer, at least uh, in the lead up to the 2024 election, this will not be the first time an electoral officer if you is go engaged. No, hang on, is engaged in uh, an activity 
uh, that's, that casts doubt on our electoral process. Let's talk about it, Jusso. When some, some uh, electoral officers were given lunch, we have the NDC now alleging that uh, in Posiga Registration Center, a, a single Ghana card is being used to register over 20 applicants. Uh, it must come as a source of worry to the Electoral Commission. No, we know that we will, we will not get everybody to be doing the right thing. That's why we have a, a loss in the country. If we, me myself, if I go contact to a law, the law should deal with me. Commission will not shield anybody who will do what is wrong. I'm not judging that it is true. So if it is true and the person has been reported to the police, we should allow the law to take What has happened place. in the case of the uh, Jusso situation? Jusso, we, we handed the case to the security. Mm -hmm. So I know Office of the Special Prosecutor is in it investigating. Then the Ghana police also investigating. We did the election on the 30th. I went and stepped in Kumasi. When I was coming back on the 1st, I passed to the office and there were about five officials from the Office of Special Prosecutor at the office interviewing the, this officer and other people there. So they are, they are I don't know what they have got mm. into, but where the people are found to be culpable, the law should take its I own see. course. I see. Are these officers still in your employ? They are all temporary staff, not permanent staff. I understand. So I, if I, it is, one, is it, temporary staff are recruited for a specific job. Once you finish that job, you are not in employment. So when you find an officer in such a situation, do you have a protocol you immediately in our you know, case, institute? Crime is crime. So once it happens, you hand it over to the police. The police will take is it. Is it making them. you review um, who you employ no, for your elections? That in our recruitment, we advertise in the dailies. People who apply, people who go to interviews, I believe you do the same here. But you don't expect everybody who come to TVT here will come and do what is right. So when somebody comes, Knowing the protocols here, the cases and the, the code of conduct, and that, if you flout it, you hand over. Some of them, they may not be criminal in nature. Mm. You just dispose of the person. If it's criminal in nature, you hand over the person to the security people to take, it, take the necessary steps and, if possible, prosecute the person. What criteria do you use in the selection of your offices? If, if you are talking of criteria, it is subjective. Okay. We only interview the person. At the interview, we will ask you a lot of questions, which I will not be discussing those questions here. Okay. So once you are, you are recruited, you have what you call code of conduct that you, you are taking to and sign. We give you training. All the training, everything will hammer on what the do's and don'ts of your work. Okay. And we'll let you know that if you, fa you are found foul of any of these things, the law will deal with you. How much? So if you look at the just one that you are talking yes. about, you know that when the offer was being given, they didn't accept it. Oh, they so, didn't? Oh, if you watch it, so it was dropped on the table. And us sitting here, what the, who took the, the envelope, the, the investigation will come out with it. We'll move away <laughs> from that. And then uh, when we come back, let's look at some other electoral issues. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is Dr. Shri Brokweku, who is the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission of Ghana. And uh, we've been looking at issues around the ongoing uh, vo uh, voter registration exercise. We've looked at some of the controversies the Electoral Commission has been embroiled in in the last few days, maybe even weeks. Uh, Doc, can the Ghanaian people trust the Electoral Commission to deliver a credible election in 2024? We have been conducting elections since 1992, and nobody has been able to overturn the results with respect to the general elections, with the exception of Rebecca Dutte and one to Najuma Kung some time ago. So, automatically, our, the posterity will judge us, output will show. So, if people, somebody decides not to trust you, Yours is to continue to do what the law allows you. Do what is right and your result will Can the Ghanaian people trust they the trust Ghanaian people trust us. No, they can't. They trust us. You think the Ghanaian people will trust they you? They trust us. Well, what, what are you doing uh, to ensure that the trust that you believe that they have uh, does not, you know, diminish? Continue to uh, do what is right. Continue to do what the law expects us to do. And that is the level you are able to and we will continue to engage the NES, like I'm here, engaging you. That's all? 
we have been given the law, and I'm working with the law. If anybody files foul of the law, we hand over the person to the law security agencies to handle them, they go to court. Immediately you hand over, you are not the one to go and prosecute. Mm. You are not the one to go and investigate. You are not the one to give judgment. So, and I will always say that election is collective responsibility activity. Media have the, have, have the responsibility to educate and inform. Electoral Commission has the responsibility to, to implement what the law is expecting us to do. The police, the police has the responsibility to arrest perpetrators and protect people to do their, work, their normal work. The judiciary has the responsibility to prosecute and give judgment, fair judgment. The government has the responsibility to provide resources. And what I'm asking is that what, what are you doing to ensure that you, know, you are able to uh, 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 deliver your mandate in a trustworthy manner in that all that has happened so far um, will not erode the trust the Ghanaian people have for you? For me, I don't know what has happened that the trust should be eroded. You have not convinced me that we have committed some irregularities or crime that should erode the trust of the people. The people are, have come, that's why they you, are... You are not concerned about the perception people will hold based on um, my the happenings of the last few days? My, my grandmother told me something, and I always keep it. Do what is right, whether somebody is watching you or not. But don't try to wake up somebody who intentionally decide to sleep. Because you cannot wake such a person up. The position as though you are unperturbed about... Uh, what could be public perception now of the Electoral Commission gives credence to uh, what critics say that uh, the Electoral Commission is not accommodating or tolerant of, uh, of other people's views. You couldn't be bothered. No, no. When, when we have an issue, we call APAC meetings. We engage them, we, we discuss everything in a transparent manner. Most of our activities, they are part of the implementation. Like I was talking of this registration review committee, the parties are there. Adjudication committee, the parties are there. We all take decisions and implement them. You are part of it. So what do you expect the commission to do? So the commission has been very transparent in all its activities. The, the NDC does not think so. They say you didn't no. even tell them. You didn't even make available to them the ele uh, electoral officers you were using for the registration no, process. We, we agreed to the decision. We, there was APAC meetings at the uh -huh. various districts. So we added that they should discuss those. those things are not discussed at the national level. I absolutely yeah. understand. Yes. But you see a week. Should it not have been 14 days No, because the, the process? Because of the recruitment process, it delayed. And you see, if I give you the list of people who have been recruited mm -hmm. before training, after training, some people may not even attend the training. Some people in the course of the training will have to be changed. You, they, 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 they will be the same people who come and tell you that you give us different name and use different name. So nobody will finish with, with their training. They will be sure of the people we are using. They will give them out. So you the admit artists. that it's because of the delay you give it to them late? Oh, I don't think we give it to them late. Uh, no, you should know. give to them 14 days before. That's what I'm saying. That. And then so, you give it to them seven days before. That's what I'm saying. If because of delay in the recruitment process. No, the training. The training process. It's, oh, well, it's, training it's, was, it, was, it was not delayed. It? Training, normally we do the training closer to the activity. So people will not lose sight of what we have trained. If there was no delay, why then didn't you give it to them 14 days? That's what I'm saying. That if they want the, the list to be given to them before training, we can do that. But it will also mean that when changes come, some of the people that we will give them will, be the people, will not be the people who will be doing the work. So it's a, it's a choice. It's a choice. I see. I see. Um, yes, choice that give it to us. We don't care whether you make changes or not. But and give it to us the accurate figure about the people who are going to do that work. Uh, let's talk about your IPAC meetings. You mentioned it earlier. How would you say these IPAC meetings are going? Because we've had a lot from the IPAC meetings, haven't we? How are they so going? We, we thank be to God that we now have full set. Everybody is participating, and you know, us meetings are when you go for a meeting, there will be disagreements and the rest, but I don't know the, the decision of the majority was real. But we should also put in, in place that the letter commission has been given a mandate by the constitution. So we normally come out with our guidelines, procedures, then we'll discuss with you. 
So when you come out, it should that you think it can be accommodated. We accommodate them. And the party will tell you that there have been instances where we take decisions where they say, no, for this, do it this way, do it this way. We, are, we accommodate. But where it will go contrary to our mandate, will not vary it because it will be contrary to what the law are saying. Just before we go, I want to look at... Uh uh, recommendations of the EU from 2020 and how what progress you have made. Um, do, in, in, do you have the recommendations? I, I, I do have a, a section of the recommendations so here. Um, and I just want us to look at two of them. Uh, the first one that says that clear procedures for uh, presiding officers, returning officers, and regional coalition officers must be stipulated on how to proceed in cases of irregularities during counting and they you know, are the all captured in process. our training manuals. But uh, what we read that. Because they are in our training manuals, if you are not an official, you don't have access to it. So what we told them was that going forward, we will upload these uh, procedures onto our website okay. so that you can have access to them. But in our training manuals, they are all there. Another problem that was noted was not from the EU recommendation, but from, from other um, election observers was, secu like, was observer security. Like, observers like... Like Kodeu was okay. the issue of security. So, I, I mean, I, I, I want to ask you, well, your offices were attacked in 2020. Uh, I think one was set ablaze in the, in the right. central region. No, ablaze was uh, Ashanti and Ahafo. Ashanti and Ahafo regions. I mean, uh, how are you uh, beefing up security going into 20? Well, we, we, we have been holding, holding a lot of meetings with the National Security Task Force. Okay. National Security Task Force, and they are replicating supposed to be replicating at the regional and district levels. Okay. So you no, know, at times you learn from negative experiences. So the security people are aware and we are hoping that these things will be rectified. Right. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much for uh, sitting with us here on Hot Issues. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Hot Issues. We are back same time at Sunday afternoon here on TV3. I'm Kemeni Amano. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.